Okay, so I moved on from gathering my data on my, uh, on my hardnesses wall right here. And now I'm actually going to move on to doing pit profile tests like the uh, column tests and the extended column and whatnot. And so um, essentially what I'm doing here is sort of finding, isolating weak layers in the snowpack that I could be worried about avalanching and then also testing the probability of that avalanching on me. If I'm just out going skiing, then these are kind of where I'm focusing most of my attention on, whereas doing this is more building the snow profile. So first thing I'm gonna do when I'm doing uh, any sort of test, I'm gonna start with the compression test. And in order to do that, first thing I'm gonna do is hollow out a little section that I call, what well, many people call a chimney. So I'm gonna start roughly. Snow saw is pretty critical in all this. And then for the, uh, I use the smaller shovel for this one. This is just a chimney, so I'm gonna make it about the size of my shovel blade. All right, there we go. So I cleared out a chimney. It was about 30 centimeters back. And now I'm actually ready to isolate my column. So for a column test, we want to column 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And uh, in many texts, they'll say at least 90 centimeters down. Uh, anything lower than that, if you're trying to see what layers, weak layers are below that, then you would have to move to something more like a deep tap test. But here we go, so I'm going to Start by measuring this one. So that's 30 centimeters by um, 30 centimeters. So I can just go in right here. Shovel that guy out. Do a little pie slice right here. There we go, and then I can. Uh, What's the purpose of a pie slice? To fully isolate the column. Okay. Okay, so I've isolated my column on this side and this side. Then I can isolate it down the back. All right, so now I have a uh, snow column that's just fully separate from the snow pack around it. So I'll just knock a little bit more out there, those isolators. Now I'm actually ready to do the full test. It's nice to do this with maybe a thicker glove on, <laughs> but um, what I do is I can place the shovel blade on top of the column. It doesn't matter if it's this way or this way. And um, if you've seen compression tests before, it's 30 taps. The first few taps are from the wrist, uh, or first 10 taps are from the wrist. Second 10 taps are from the elbow. And then the third taps, or the final set of 10 taps is from the shoulder. And um, it is, again, a little bit subjective, but when I'm doing the weight, I'm just letting the weight of my hand fall onto the shovel. Same thing with my elbow. Just let the weight of that upper arm fall onto the shovel, and then the weight of the full arm. So you can see there's a little bit of an increase in, um, in how hard you tap. You'll also see people sort of leveling off the top too. Sometimes it's nice to do that. All right, and then what, I, what I'm watching for is I'm watching my column to see if there's any layers that give way, so. Whoa, did you guys see that? You may have not. No, I think I caught it. Um, so that was like right at the end right there. It used to be that we would record CT 
uh, well, in this case, it would be CT29, uh, the specific number. Now they've changed it to like soft, medium, and hard. So it would be a CTH. And I can write down the number of uh, the number of taps anyway. It was about here, this upper column. We can trace it back to about the uh, that interface. Where did I write down for that one? 15 centimeters down. That was a CTH. 29 next to it. See, I'm running out of room on this I know. paper. Um, okay, so now that I've recorded that, let's actually just like um, I, I could finish the test. I mean, I only have one more hit to go. <laughs> see yeah okay so the whole thing is actually just sort of compressed straight down and actually it wasn't even really all it did was compress it didn't even slide off or anything and so I should actually make a note of that so this is the upper pack right here that did fracture at 29th hit Oh, there it goes. Ah. Now that's a pretty well congealed block right there. You can see it was about 20 centimeters of snow. And then one thing that's worth looking at is sort of the surface down here. And uh, actually, again, it may be kind of hard to see with the camera. Maybe you can see it. So what I have here, you can see it's kind of like... Um, really large rounded crystals right there and I can even really what they are is uh, they're rounded grains that are frozen together and so what that creates is they're really large crystals see all round and whatnot and so my theory is that that made more of a rolling surface so maybe on steeper slopes it's like marbles with a pizza box on top. It could, it could actually possibly propagate right here. But the point of the compression test is really to isolate those weak layers. Now I can move on to my extended column test to actually see if there's a high level of propagation. If I wanted to, I could always go right back into that compression test right here and see if any of the lower layers happen to uh, fail as well. Um, some people may call this a deep tap test, but it's only really deep tap test if you're in the really lower level of the snowpack, something like a 90 to 100 centimeters down. Uh, if you really want to actually get good at this stuff, then the best thing to do is to take a class. This is no replacement for your level one. I barely actually covered any of the information covered in a level one. And um, so it's just all sort of stuff to help you guys along with like running through your tests and maybe helping you keep things accurate. Uh, if you would like to see more videos like this, then please leave a comment. I do, I would like to make more in the future and more stuff about skiing in general, but um, if you like it, then thumbs up and subscribe. That always helps out. I'll get a sponsor one of these days. And uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.